This is the second video in the video series covering the anatomical structures of the fetal pig. In this particular video, we will concentrate on the cardiovascular or the circulatory system. <clears throat> now, the cardiovascular system is responsible for transporting nutrients, gases, hormones, and metabolic waste to and from the individual cells of an organism. And because uh, the cardiovascular system is so critical to the functionality of a living organism, we will see a highly branched network of blood vessels that will spread through the entire organism. And so every time we have a branch or we have a blood vessel move from one part of the body to the next, we will see a uh, name change. Before we begin with the uh, circulatory system of the fetal pig, let's review over the circulatory system of the human body. Now, as you'll recall, I told you the difficulty of mastering the cardiovascular and circulatory system of the human dealt with the blood vessels surrounding the heart. So as we review, the main vein of the body is the vena cava. If it's below the heart, it's called the inferior vena cava. If it's above the heart, it's called the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava branches. Now, uh, just as we talked about on our previous video, when we deal with um, our fetal pig or we deal with a human, we deal with their right and left and not our own. And so this side over here will be the right side of our organism. This will be the left side. So we have our superior vena cava that branches, and that will make our right brachiocephalic and our left brachiocephalic veins. Our brachiocephalic veins branch, and they will make our right subclavian that will go to our right forearm, and our left subclavian that will go to the left arm. The second branch that comes off the brachiocephalic is the right jugular that will go up the side of the neck and the left jugular that will go up the side of the neck. Moving over, our main artery of the body is the aorta. Here we have the aortic arch. When it straightens out, it is the thoracic aorta. It remains thoracic aorta until it passes through the diaphragm. Once it passes through the diaphragm, it becomes the abdominal aorta. Branching off of our aortic arch, we have three branches. The first branch is our brachiocephalic artery. Notice that we have two brachiocephalic veins and only one brachiocephalic artery. The next branch that we see is the left common carotid artery. This will run up the uh, on the left side, up the side of the neck. And then we have our left subclavian artery that will go over to the left arm. Our brachiocephalic artery branches. It makes the uh, right subclavian artery that goes over to the right arm. And our right common carotid artery that goes up the side of the neck. Now, as we study the cardiovascular system of the fetal pig, it will be important to note that we will see key differences in the circulatory system of the fetal pig versus the human circulatory system. This will be due to two reasons. One, we're looking at a pig versus a human, and while both are mammals, we will see differences. Secondly, we are looking at a fetal organism versus an adult organism. So we will also see adaptations for fetal development. Now the main key thing that I want you to notice as a difference is that when we look at our heart and we're looking at the arteries around the heart, we will see a difference. From our previous slide, we looked at our inferior and our superior um, vena cava and we saw the branches coming off the superior vena cava those are the same on the fetal pig as on the human heart however when we look at our arteries surrounding the heart we will see a key difference on the human heart we had our aortic arch that had three branches that came off of it on the fetal pig we have two branches that come off of the aortic arch. 
we have the left subclavian artery which goes over to the left arm and we have the brachiocephalic artery. The brachiocephalic artery will have three branches that come off of it. It will have our right subclavian artery that will go to our right arm and then we will have our right and left common carotids that will go up uh, along each side of the throat area. And so on our fetal pig we have two branches versus three and our brachiocephalic will have those blood vessels coming off. So we will have the right subclavian and we will have the right common carotid and the left common carotid. Do pay attention to the difference between the fetal pig and the human heart on these areas. Here we have a close-up of the fetal heart and remember that the fetal heart has uh, four chambers just like on the human heart we have our left and right uh, ventricles and our left and right atria. Do remember that the atria are called oracles on the outside so we can see our right atrium here and our left atrium here and we can call that an oracle. We have our right ventricle and our left ventricle. We can see a coronary blood vessel, coronary artery running down. Uh, this indentation is the coronary sulcus. It's where we would see the interventricular septum or that wall separating our right and our left ventricles. We can also see the beginnings of the superior vena cava as it leaves the top of the heart. Here we have another close-up view of the uh, fetal heart and we can see our left ventricle and our right ventricle and we can see that coronary sulcus with a coronary artery running down. We can see our uh, right oracle and our left oracle. Here we have our pulmonary trunk or pulmonary artery. Inside this would be one of the valves we would have, that pulmonary semilunar valve. Here we can see the aortic arch. Now on the fetal pig, if we remember, the aorta has two branches coming off of it. We have the brachiocephalic artery and then we have the left subclavian artery that would go over to the left forearm. Our brachiocephalic will have branches coming off of it. We can see the branches starting here. We'll see a close-up of this in just a moment. We can also see the lungs on either side. So we're starting to look at some of the details of the fetal heart. Again, here we have a human heart we can see the aortic arch and we can see the three branches, the brachiocephalic, the uh, left common carotid, the left subclavian, the brachiocephalic artery branches into the right subclavian and the right common carotid. Now let's compare this to our fetal pig. The head will be up in this area. And so as we look in this area, right here we can see the larynx and we can see the trachea. Here we have the heart. And as we see the heart, we can see the oracle. Now coming off of that heart, we can see that pulmonary trunk. Now I do want to show you this little structure right here. That's called the ductus arteriosum. And this is a difference we're going to see, and this is due to fetal circulation. And so we would not see this on the human uh, adult circulatory system, but we would see it on a fetal circulatory system. And the reason for this is the majority of the uh, blood will be redirected through the ductus arteriosus, and this connects the pulmonary artery or that pulmonary trunk with the aorta. And this is going to channel the blood into the aorta, bypassing parts of that developing heart. And so we can see uh, that ductus arteriosus right there. And as we continue we can see our aortic arch right in this area here. It has those two branches, one right here, one right here. This first one is the brachiocephalic artery. The second one is the left subclavian artery. It's going to go over to that left arm. The brachiocephalic artery will have uh, three branches coming off. The right subclavian that will go to the right arm. And then the right 
and left common carotids. In this particular video, we can see several of the veins associated with the heart. Now our cranial area is located up here. Right here we've got our lungs. Here we've got a little bit of the liver showing. We've got the heart. Now this is our superior vena cava because it is above the heart. Our superior vena cava has two branches that come off. We have our left and our right brachiocephalic veins. Our brachiocephalic veins will have two branches. We will have a branch that will go over to the arm which will be our uh, subclavians. We can see that here and we can see it right here. The next branch that we see that comes off is going to be our common jugular. Now our common jugular, once it branches, we will be able to see our right internal jugular that goes deep and our uh, right external jugular that stays more superficial. We will not differentiate these. We do want you to know the superior vena cava, the brachiocephalic veins, the subclavian uh, veins and then the common jugular veins. You are not required to know the internal versus the external on the jugulars. Again, um, going back over the heart one additional time and it's because certain blood vessels and certain areas of the body are a little more difficult and a little bit more concentrated and the heart region is one of these areas to spend time on. So we have our aorta. Again, because we are above the uh, diaphragm, this is the thoracic aorta. We can come around and we can see that aortic arch. Uh, we can have the uh, pulmonary artery and we've got that ductus arteriosus attaching that, that uh, pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk over to the aorta. Again, this is a fetal circulatory system adaptation. Uh, coming off of the uh, aortic arch, we have those two branches that are very clear to see, the left subclavian artery and the brachiocephalic artery. Coming off of the brachiocephalic artery, we've got the right subclavian artery and the right and the left common carotid arteries. We can also see the trachea very clear and we can see where the common carotids are located in relation to the trachea. In this view you can also see some of these branchings that we've just spoken about. But moving down we have our uh, diaphragm. So once that we move below the heart our main vein of the body is going to be the inferior vena cava. And we can see it here. We can see a little bit of it here as it's leaving the heart. Now the inferior vena cava comes down. Also we can see our abdominal aorta coming down. And they are going to stay inferior vena cava and abdominal aorta until we see a branching going on in this area. Additionally, we can see our kidneys located here. So we have our right and left renal arteries and veins. We are going to concentrate on this area right here on our next slide. Now we will be looking at the branching as they're associated with the aorta. However, the inferior vena cava's branchings are identical to the aorta's branching. The only difference is they will have the name vein behind them versus artery. So um, we are looking at the head region being far up from this side. Moving down we would have our hind legs located here and here. So we're moving down and we are in the um, abdominal area and we have that abdominal aorta. And it remains abdominal aorta until we have a branching. Now with this branching on the artery, you're going to notice that it continues to be the abdominal aorta and then we have the branching. This branching here would be our right and our left common iliac arteries. The right and the left common iliac arteries remain the name until we have the next branching. Now when we have that next branching, the smaller one here will go deep and will be our internal iliac artery 
and this right here will be our external iliac artery. Now it will stay the external iliac uh, artery until we pass through the pelvic area into the leg, at which time it changes to the femoral artery. Now in addition to that, in this area right here, we do have a fetal adaptation because here we have that umbilical arteries running along the side. In between them we have the um, urinary bladder and so we can see that going on. Now right along here we can see our inferior vena cava and it will branch very similarly. It will come down and once we have a branch we would have our right and our left common iliac veins our internal and external ilia iliac veins we would not have this umbilical area this right here is unique to the arteries and unique to the fetal organism finally this is the list of anatomical structures that you are held responsible for for the upcoming lab practical you will notice that this is comprehensive covering um, anatomical structures that uh, encompass a wide variety of systems of the body and um, if you can identify each of these structures on this list uh, and you understand what we've covered on the two videos you should be well prepared for the upcoming lab practical as always feel free to contact me if you have any questions or concerns good luck